Hey guys, so I am back to read chapter four and chapter five of our Great Barrier Reef book. Um, I decided to do it outside because it's so pretty today. I hope that you are enjoying all this beautiful weather. So chapter four, Creatures of the Reef. From the tiniest algae to the largest whales, thousands of species of animals live in the Great Barrier Reef. Each serves a purpose, purpose in the community. More than 1,700 species of fish live in the Great Barrier Reef. The Queensland grouper is one of the largest, weighing more than 1,000 pounds. The grouper's mouth is so huge, it can swallow sharks and rays whole. But there is one tiny fish that the grouper lets into its mouth and it does not eat. The tiniest blue streak cleaner Rass swims in and out of the grouper's mouth, eating dead skin and parasites. Every now and then, it vibrates its fin against the inside of the grouper's mouth. It's reminding the grouper not to swallow it. There is the grouper with the little fish inside of its mouth. Other large animals like manta rays and sea turtles, even fearsome moray eels, also use the wrasse as cleaning service. The wrasse actually dances in the water to call attention to itself and to bring animals to its cleaning station. Like the relationship between coral polyps and their microalgae, the cleanser wrasse and its clients get, each get something they need. These relationships exist all over the Great Barrier Reef. So that's the moray eel. For example, goby fish and pistol shrimp live together in small burrows in the sand. Gobies can see very well, but the shrimp are almost blind. When outside the burrow, a shrimp uses its long antenna to, stop, to, antennae to stay in contact with the goby. If the goby sees danger coming, it flaps its tail and swims into the burrow and the shrimp follows it. In return, the shrimp digs the burrow and keeps the goby's home clean. With the ever shifting sands, it is a big job. Clownfish and sea anemones also have a symbi symbiotic relationship. The sea anemone is a relative of the coral polyp. It has poisonous tentacles, which it uses to attack and eat fish but the clownfish is immune to the anemone sting. This means the sting does not affect it. The clownfish makes the sea anemone its home. It is protected from other fish that might get stung by the anemone. In return, the clownfish eats the anemone's old dead tentacles and keeps the area clean. The sea anemone even feeds on clownfish poop. The clownfish also chases away fish that want to eat the anemone. Okay, there's the goby and the pistol shrimp. And then here's the clownfish and the sea anemone. Okay, I wanna see if you can comment, what's an example of a clownfish and a sea anemone? Like there's a movie, what am I thinking of? The coral reef itself provides food and shelter for many animals. Crabs, octopuses, and eels live in its nooks and crannies. During the day, groups of white tips rest in caves and on the sandy ocean floor, but at night they hunt. Even in the dark, they can find their prey by using their keen sense of smell. Um, so here's a picture of an octopus that's hiding in a cave. Parrotfish have a trick for escaping the sharks. They cover up their smell by bleaching out a bubble of muc belching out a bubble of mucus. This they surround themselves within this spit bubble. Then they go to sleep for the night. Does this always work? No. So a white tip shark is what it's talking about, and there is the um, parrotfish with the bubble of mucus that it belched out. Ooh. Besides having a superb sense of smell, sharks can also detect tiny movements in the water. The slender white tip sharks are also very flexible. When they find their prey, they can wriggle into small cracks in the reef. The fish don't stand a chance. 
It's not just sharks that fish have to watch out for. The cone snail is a small but deadly fish eater. Using its sense of smell, it sneaks up on the little fish as they sleep. When it gets close enough, the snail releases a chemical, drugging the fish so it can't move. Next, the fish is allowed, swallowed alive, and a barb inside the snail kills the fish with a shot of poison. Some cone snails shoot a harpoon-like spear at their prey, then pull the fish into their mouth. There are more than 600 species of cone snails in the world. About 120 live on and around the Great Barrier Reef. 100 different types of poison exist in each species of cone snail. Some of these toxins can kill a person, but they can also help people. Scientists around the world are studying cone snails. Their toxins are used to treat diseases and make medicines. So here's another picture of the uh, parrotfish in the mucus bubble up closer, and this is a cone snail. It's really neat that they use their poisons to help us. The Great Barrier Reef is also home to ocean giants. The whale shark is the largest fish in the world. It grows to more than 40 feet long and weighs as much as three full grown African elephants. Despite its size, the whale shark is a gentle giant. Although its mouth contains more than 300 rows of teeth, it doesn't eat most sea creatures. That's because the whale shark is a filter feeder. It feeds on krill, plankton, algae, and tiny fish by opening its enormous mouth and pumping water through its gills. Filters on the inside of the gills catch its food. Look how big. And it gives you a little uh, scuba diver up here to kind of show you um, an example of how big the whale shark, or uh, yeah, the whale shark actually is. Besides whale sharks, actual whales are also found around the Great Barrier Reef. From May to September, humpback whales leave the icy waters of Antarctica to visit the area. They come to the Barrier Reef to give birth. They raise their calves in the reef's warm waters. Look, there's a whale and a baby. Other species of whale that live around the reef include sperm killer and false killer whales. Dolphins live here too, like the Australian snubfin, bottlenose, and spotted dolphins. So these are bottlenose dolphins. Jumping about the water. Many species of reptiles live around the Great Barrier Reef, including 14 species of sea snakes. A, sna a sea snake looks a lot like a snake you would find on land, except its tail is shaped like a paddle. This helps it swim better. It can swim underwater for up to, for up to two hours without coming up for air. How is it able to do this? It has a large, powerful lung. Its single lung is almost as long as its entire body. Sea snakes are extremely poisonous, but they rarely bite people. In addition to sea snakes, six species of sea turtles are found on the Great Barrier Reef. The olive ridley turtle is the smallest weighing around 100 pounds. Leatherback turtles are the largest. They can be more than six feet long and weigh as much as 1,500 pounds. Sea turtles spend most of their life in water, eating algae, seagrass, shrimp, crabs, and jellyfish. But once a year, thousands of them come to the beaches and islands of the Great Barrier Reef to lay their eggs. Here's a black banded sea crate, oh, a sea snake, and then there is the leatherback turtle. With its front flippers, the female turtle pulls itself slowly up a sandy beach. It is looking for the perfect spot to make a nest. The sand can't be too powdery or dry. The sea turtle digs out a nest with its black flippers. For the next 20 minutes, it will lay around 120 eggs. Finally, it covers them up with sand and returns to the water. The temperature inside the nest determines whether the turtles will be born or male or female. Cooler nests means male and warmer ones mean females. The eggs take two to three months to hatch. After a couple days of digging, the baby sea turtles all emerge and head straight for the ocean. 
The water may be close by, but the trip is dangerous for the two inch long babies. Birds and crabs love to eat the hatchlings. If the turtles make it to the water, they'll take cover in floating seaweed and ride the ocean currents for hundreds, even thousands of miles as they feed and grow. Out in the open ocean, young sea turtles are in constant danger. They can eat, be eaten or even caught up in fishing nets. They die from eating floating trash like plastic, which they can mistake for food. After five or 10 years, when the turtles have grown to about the size of a dinner plate, they return to coastal areas to feed and grow some more. Finally, 20 or more years after hatching, the baby sea turtles are all grown up. Only one out of every thousand hatchlings will make it this far, but when they do, the turtles return to the same area, sometimes the very same beaches where they hatched. And there's some baby sea turtles. Lizard Island in the Northern Great Barrier Reef is home to, you guessed it, lizards. Captain Cook named the island for its many yellow spotted monitor lizards. These four foot long lizards use their forked tongues to sniff out their prey. They can also balance on their back legs and tail to reach their food, like a tasty crunchy grasshopper high, high up in a bush. The largest reptile in the world can also be found on the Great Barrier Reef. The saltwater crocodile also uh, known in Australia as the salty, can grow up to more than 20 feet long and weigh more than 2,000 pounds. Salties are extremely dangerous. They have been known to attack and kill humans. It's rare, however, to see them swimming among the coral, coral reefs. They prefer swamps, creeks, and lagoons near the shore. From the tiny zooplankton and colorful reef fish, to sharks, crocodiles, and whales, so many creatures live in the Great Barrier Reef, but there is more to their beautiful home than just its coral reefs. So there's the yellow spotted lizard setting up on its back legs, and then there's the salty crocodile. Since chapter four was so long, I'm only gonna read that one today. Um, I hope you have an awesome weekend. Um, and I can't wait to see your comment to see if you figured out what movie I was talking about. I miss you guys terribly. Um, and I can't wait till we get to be together again.